Hi and welcome to another of our after hour conversations at the Power of 50. This day our focus has been on spare parts and as you know if you've watched any of this series you'll know that this is where we draw the expert insights out. Having brought 50 people together, real industry leaders, um, it's my joy and privilege to have a conversation and continue the conversations and share that with you at home. Um, as always I'll ask you, you are to introduce yourself because You'll always do a better job than I will, but if you can tell the audience at home who you are and then we'll have a, a conversation about some of the discussions we've been having today. Happy to do that. So my name is Jan Olsson. I work for a company called Morel and, and there I have a role which is called service business and strategy. So I work a lot with how do we drive our service business within Morel and how do we work strategically in the aftermarket. Morel is doing equipment for the food industry and mm. so service is a big thing. So it's plus 40% of our, of our total revenue. So aftermarket is super important for us. Yeah, yeah, and um, of course, when we look at the aftermarket and that service revenue as well, parts is a huge part of that. Yeah. We saw in your presentation this morning. Um, there was quite, a, it's going to be a hard one for you because it was a lot of information packed in. I think you said right at the top of this morning, trying to pack in, in a 20 minute presentation, to what should be two weeks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you to do it in two minutes. Uh, oh, but what, what, what would you say was the kind of the, the big message that you were trying to get across to the guys in the room today? I think, that, I, think it, I think my big message is about that it all starts with the customer. So whatever you're going to do with aftermarket or any business, but mm. I think aftermarket as well, you need to think about your customer. Yeah. What are their needs? How does your customer base look like? And then from that, you need to start building your strategy. So mm. it all starts with the customer. So I think that is the main point. And I think as we also discussed a bit, we have quite a range of customers. Some are really big, some mm. are really small. And we talked about spare parts and the, the way we approach spare parts needs to be slightly different depending on a huge mm. customer with hundreds of machines in one location or the small customer with maybe one machine. So their needs and the potential they have is very different. So our approach needs to be different. So I think that was, I think one of the main points. I think the other main point is that if we look at our big customers, which is a growing share of our, we have a Pareto setup basically. 20% yeah. of customers generate 80% of revenues. So we see that for those customers, pricing is important, but it's really about building loyalty. Mm -hmm. So we want to be the one-stop shop for these customers. Yes. And what can you do to be that one-stop shop? It means, do they see value in working with you? Yeah. So I think that's a little bit what the main points start with the customer, understand the differences. And for us, it was then a little bit in. For the big ones, we need to work with loyalty. Mm. And there are many things in that, of course. Pricing is one. So how do we make pricing attractive from a loyalty perspective? So if you're more loyal, how do we financially make that attractive, but there are a lot of other things. And I think a lot of the presenters, and that's what's so good with it, that you hear the others, yes. and it's all about how do we add value to our customers. Yeah. Pricing is not the thing, it is one thing, but adding value to customers is the key thing. And that service and spare parts together is where you contribute. And it's more solutions yeah. than selling individual spare parts. Exactly. And that's where we start to see a number, of, well, number one, absolutely right. I always find it fascinating when we bring these groups together that we'll see the same pain points quite yeah. often. Uh, we'll see interesting different perspectives on those from different industry verticals, um, but a commonality. Yeah. Um, and the point around understanding that value, I want to just dive into that a little yeah. bit for me. Um, you know, I've often looked at when we really want to understand that customers, where, where they perceive the value, quite often that's a little bit different to what we they think, think they think. Um, and quite often, I like the analogy of the iceberg. The yeah. bit that we see at the top might be pricing. Yeah. It might be some very top line stuff. When actually we start getting under the waterline, we're seeing the mitigation of risk yeah. or we're seeing the continuation of uptime or the delivery. What would you say is the best up way of to, to start that journey when you're talking to those customers? Who should be leading that conversation? I think it is, uh, I, I fully agree with you. So I think it is about understanding. And I think we sometimes, as you said, we meet our customers often. We have regular contacts with them. So we think we think we know what they think. Yeah. But in reality, you need to actually spend more time in really understanding. And I think that comes from the people who meet the customers. But I think we need to help them to ask other questions than just what spare parts would you like to have today? Yes. Or we have a burning issue here, how can we resolve it? Because the underlying, as you said, is more about having an in-depth discussion. But to have that discussion, you need to come with something that makes that valuable for the customer. Mm -hmm. They don't want to spend two hours discussing something with you if they don't feel it adds anything for them. So you need to be able then to say that, okay, we are using this to provide a solution to you. Mm. And you need to come with certain things that says, okay, thanks to that you're sharing your real needs, so to say, with us, mm. we can provide a better service to you. 
But I also think that it goes the other way around, that I think some cases the customer maybe haven't articulated yes. their need. So it is really a, a give and take in that if you can share best practices from other mm. customers, for example, of course you can't say about this customer did this, but you can say customers with similar type of equipment yes. have a higher performance than you have on your equipment, and we, they have done more preventive maintenance, more training, they've had more spare parts on their own stock mm. to reduce the risk if you have a 24-7 production, etc. So then you can explain to the customer why it's so important that they give you as much input as possible so that you can show them the yes. solution. But sometimes you need to talk about the solution as well for them to understand that, okay, this is what you need to know. I mm. thought you only needed to know how many parts I need. Yeah, and also, also I suppose I would say there's also at that point, I mean, there's two things that come out of this. Yeah. There, there, there's that value is what underlines that trust yeah. and it's it's kind of it continues it's, yes. it's, it's like a, a, a continuous circle yeah. um, but it's also understanding that actually we probably want to speak to the the, the the operations manager on the factory floor, but we also want to speak to the CFO. Yeah. And we also want to speak to all these different parts Partners. of the business um, to understand where they're coming from. I yeah. suppose there's different stakeholders will have different value perceptions. Would you say that's that's abs absolutely true? And if you look at it, if you if you I mean you often are faced with procurement. Mm. They have certain KPIs. Yeah. Okay. Reduce cost, or get the discount, or whatever mm. it is. They are not often looking so much on. Um, what are the consequences for the operations? Mm. If you talk to a maintenance manager, he's got a maintenance budget. If you talk to a factory manager, he's probably measured more on yield and output and overall yes. total cost of ownership and so on. So as you said, they have quite different starting points and you need to manage mm. different discussions with different, because they're all stakeholders. So you cannot say, exactly, I yeah. don't care about this or I don't care about that. You need to talk to the different ones and then, but you need to have a little bit different messages Mm. or different discussions, so you understand yes. all and of them. And then you're bringing in a holistic view, view from them, which is, exactly. again, an added value. And that's what you need to do. So you need to, as you said, you need to think about different stakeholders have different needs, and they're measured in different ways. We shouldn't mm. underestimate that what are their incentives based upon. So we need to work with that, but we need to understand the different ones. And I think typically, as a supplier, and we want to then be the preferred partner for our customers, it is very important to have the dialogue we're the ones who have the more holistic view on the operations because mm. typically we are asking them to invest more in maintenance, for example, yes. to get more out of the total. But of course, if I only have a limited budget for maintenance, I would say, okay, I don't want to spend more. I don't. I can't mm. spend more on maintenance because that's what I measured on. But if yes. you get the one who has the more holistic view, he or she could see that. Oh, I understand. If I spend a hundred thousand here, I actually gain two hundred. Yes. Okay, then it's then it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, to your point, it's important to, to talk to the different stakeholders. So that's definitely mm. true. And I think, who do we have? I mean, we have our salespeople who are out there meeting customers, so they need to have that dialogue. But we need to equipment mm. to have a value-based dialogue yes, and not exactly. just a product catalog. Yeah. They need to understand what is it I'm talking about. And typically, I think most companies like we, you have quite a bit of information about the customer. So you can also do some mm. homework before you go to the customer to say, okay, from our view, we see you, you've done a lot of rush orders. Mm. Why would you do so many rush orders? That's quite expensive. Yeah. Could you maybe do more planned activities? That would actually help you to save so and so much. Yeah. So we also need to show that we spend time Understanding on that, points. that customer to help them. And that's, of course, where we see the difference on the big ones and the small ones. Now, this was going to be uh, my, my, my last kind of chain of thought. Yeah. You've been very gracious for yeah. time, so thank you, because I know, I know I'm yeah. keeping you away from no, 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 coffees no, no and problem. everything, but it's a great conversation, so I've got one more area to go into. You mentioned at the top the Pareto structure of the business. So yeah. We saw that graph on, on the presentation this morning. And obviously, what we're talking about here is something that is very, very well suited to the organization making the investment in the right sales uh, people, people that have perhaps a challenger sales mentality, which not every sales guy has. Oh. Um, sales people that have an understanding of service, an understanding of operations, it ceases to be a sales conversation and becomes a business conversation. Yep. Where, do we, where do we look at that and go, okay, this is how we look after the 20% say that are generating 8% of our revenue, but do we then look at more automated tools for the, 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 the longer tail? Yeah. How do we split that? I'm not sure if there is one answer to it, but yeah. I think what we see is that where you spend, because as you said, I mean, if you're going to go really with the big ones, you need to spend quite a bit of time on, on mm. more or less consulting work yes, yeah. to help them to optimize their operations, which we want to do. So there is fine, because then you can say, I take the investment because there is a big potential. If you have a long tail of smaller customers, you can't spend two weeks on preparing for 
such a mm. meeting. So there you need to more look at how can we automate and make it really efficient so we can still treat them in a good way. We can have online solutions so it's easy for them still yeah. because we want to serve them well, but we cannot spend man days and man days on analyzing mm. them. So there we need to go to more automation, more online. So good for them, but also mm. in a in a let's say an efficient way to handle it for us. So I think that is why the segmentation is so important yeah. to to have different approaches to the different groups. Mm. And and I think we and, and many others, I think that's where we are continuously working on improving. How do we do this? But I think just another reflection on what you said, I think it's easy to talk about value-based selling. I think mm -hmm. most companies talk about it. You can read any book and it's always there and so on. But I think that's also a skill. Yeah. It's not something you can just not tell people, now you should have a value-based discussion mm -hmm. with your customer. You need to train people. You need yes. to give them the tools. You need to support them. You need to have specialists who maybe coach them. So. It's also taking it seriously. Now, if mm. you want to drive that, you need to build those skills, those skills and capabilities to have those discussions. And yeah. that's, of course, we have a separate sales force for service and one for equipment sales. And what we're trying to do is to get them to work together mm -hmm. and come to the customer as one yes. and say, this is the solution which includes both equipment and the services. And that's what will have the value to the customer, not one or the other, but the combination. Mm -hmm. And there is also the change in mindsets that we come yeah. as one and not yes. as two. So. Yes. One of the biggest challenges I've always had with aftermarket is just a simple term because yeah. it comes after the market. Yes. And as we move more and more into a world of servitization and everything coming together, yeah. um, it's great to see that, yeah. that, that sales and service approach sitting alongside yeah. each other. It's been a great conversation. Thank you so much Thanks. for the great Thank presentation Thank you for arranging. Well. It's super nice to be here and meet all the peers. So it's a great and valuable for me to come and learn from others. So it's a super good event. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.